I need to organize my messy office. And this might just be the secret. And you guys know I love stories, so we've got to come up with something for this that's kind of nerdy and super organized and also that looks cool. So up top, I want to have a shelf with some task lighting on it. We'll put some LEDs in there to really light things up here for when I'm working. So I want to go ahead and start with a shelf. Let's head to the shop. Hey guys, it's Brad from the future. Actually, I already made that shelf and have released a video on it because as I was designing it, it just started getting more detailed and I wanted to have a whole video to show you exactly how it was done. Now it turned out amazing and I've got the task lighting there so I can see everything on the countertop as well as the ambient LED lights. So it was a really cool project and now I can really start focusing on the wall underneath that for the organization. I really wanted to look around in my shop because my shop is really already hyper organized and see what I can take from here and apply it into the office. So this was one of the first things that I built for my shop and this is the garage workbench with a nice pegboard hutch on the top of it. And this has been awesome. And I love the idea of just having a place for everything and everything in its place. And I even did a lot of labeling on these so that you can see exactly what goes there. So when I take things away, I know where to put them back. Uh, my machine is square is, is out gallivanting somewhere. Not sure where that exactly is. And of course, every good shop needs a fly swatter. <laughs> Sorry. I love the adjustability and the function of the pegboard. I just don't think it looks that great. Pegboard just has this connotation of like being in an old garage for me. So I wanted something that looked a bit better and I went out on the hunt. I started with the usual suspects and I checked out the wall control panels and I checked out the IKEA SCADIS system. And both of those are great, but the main problem is that those systems are made for the masses. And so they only have a few different sizes in each of them. And so you have to use multiples of those to make it fit your area. And when I looked at what I had, it just didn't work out. I needed something custom and then it hit me like uh, Will Smith on a bad night at the Oscars. <laughs> Why not use my 3D printer to make something custom for my 3D printing station? I know most of you don't have 3D printers because I did a poll, even though over half of you do want to get one at some point. I held off on getting a 3D printer for a while because I didn't really know what I would do with it. And all I saw were people making trinkets and putting the rock's head on things. Although the Rocktopus is pretty cool. It was when I was putting together the miter saw station here when it really clicked in my head how I could start using some 3D printing in the shop. And this was because of the dust collection back here. I designed this. Now, so this is a little 3D printed part I have and it's wrapped in electrical tape and that was just for a good fit. But basically what this does is it just goes from the dust port on the back of the saw to the inside of this little flexible hose that I'm using. And there are no fittings out there that would do this, so I modeled it myself and that allows me to put the saw as close as possible to the back wall. Now since then I've printed other adapters like this one that goes on the end of my fine dust hose. Here, and that actually is an amazing fit and so it won't come off. But 3D printing is perfect for making a part that you just can't find. And I showed a few different ways that I use that in the shop in my eight ways to organize drawers. And during my search for the wall organization, I found this. I don't even know what that is! So this is a grid piece for the honeycomb storage wall system. I found this on printables from a user named Rasta P and it is a very popular model. I will leave a link down below in the description, but this is the base for the system and how it works is really cool. Let me show you all the details. So this is basically a modular storage system and you can print them in different colors and then match them up any which way you want and you can make whatever size grid you want, which accomplishes the goal I was looking for. But the really cool part is how the little inserts interact with the walls. So if you look at the back, you can see that there is a little part here that is cut out and that allows for little pieces to be locked into it. So this is a little insert and it has some little tabs on it. So if I push it in, it will snap right in. And it's locked in place there. So with that insert in, then you have the mating pieces. And this is probably one of the simplest things. It's just a little hook and you can just insert that right in there. And then you can just hang your favorite mustache bottle opener on it. And you can also use different holes in different combinations. So I put in these little red inserts for a little uh, garish Christmas theme in this little shelf here that Rost P also provides. So you can use multiple holes or go as far out as you want and put whatever you want in there. 
The cool thing about it is that there are tons of remixes and the community has made all of their own little personalized designs and uploaded them to printables as well. So you can download things to hold tape or to hold screwdrivers or earbuds or even an iPhone. And I'm gonna be using a lot of those designs to hang up things in the office, but I know there are also some custom designs that I wanna do. So we're gonna have to figure that out a little bit later. So I went out and started printing and I printed a lot. <laughs> This is a stack of 24 of these grids and they're about 9 inches by 10 inches and when I stack them all together they're going to completely fill up this area under the shelf and that is the great thing about 3D printing. It's going to fit it just the way that I want it to. So if you're wondering about time and cost, each one of these is 116 grams and I printed 24 so that's about 2800 grams plus the connectors and different things. I got them all out of three rolls of filament which are one kilogram a piece. And these run for about $25 shipped after tax for me. So just in the Walgreens, I had about 75 bucks, which is way cheaper than what it would take to fill that out with any of the other options. Now the price you pay for these being inexpensive is they take a long time to print. Now this guy right here, each one of them took me about three hours to print. And if I pushed it to the limits, I could get it down to about two and a half. Now that's actually a pretty good speed because I was using my newest printer, the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, which is a fantastic machine. Now I reached out to Bamboo Lab and they sent one of these over, so a big thank you to them. But this machine is way faster than what the standard machines are and what I started off with. But if I tried to print these on a smaller format machine, that would take about the same three hours, but I'd have to print 50% more of them to cover my space. So at three hours each, if you're doing the math, that would be a solid three days of nonstop 3D printing. Really, it took me about three weeks off and on to print them. So I started laying out the panels to see how they would fit. I think this is gonna work out really nicely. I don't really love though up here how it's kind of jagged at the edge. My inner perfectionist wants a nice straight line. I think I can fix that. Now the original files by Arasta P were kind of, you get what you get, but he did have the measurements on there like I mentioned, and a user named Wirehead Arts made a parametric design in this program called OpenSCAD. So I was able to open it up in there and make whatever size I wanted, and he also has this really cool feature where you can just click buttons and add in a left edge or a top. So if you planned ahead, you could print pieces with borders already on them, but I didn't, so I'm just gonna print the borders. And after a little 3D printing, I got some edge pieces and these can go right up there and it looks awesome. So much better. I also printed some corners here and these are going to work awesome. But if you plan ahead, then you could just print them all in one piece. Here's how I'm going to attach these to the wall. I'm just going to be using these little drywall anchors and you could attach them to the studs. But honestly, I was looking at it <laughs> and I could not do it because it would be all off centered and that really hurt my soul deep down inside. So instead, I'm going to use these, and then there's going to be a ton of them on the wall, so it should be fine. And I'll be using these connectors to connect grids together, and then going with the countersunk hole there to attach it into the drywall anchor. So let's get started. I'm just going to put these up here, and I do have the trim now. Get everything centered the way I want it. All right, so I actually have four pieces that are coming together right here. So I'm going to use a little three-piece, which will hook together the bottom, this grid, and that grid right here and then to connect the rest of this to this bottom trim over here i will just do it just like a this and it will kind of have this cool little v shape which really makes me happy i'm going to use one of these little single inserts which i cut the tabs off of it so it won't lock in place and i'll put that in place and then use a little scratch all to position where the drywall anchor will go then i can drill it out and put everything back in place and lock it in All right, that worked out really well. Now I want the middle to be the tightest. So I'm actually gonna work all the way up to the top and then work my way out. Uh, and that way things won't get pulled and then there'll be a gap in the middle. We can't have that. This is looking awesome. I am loving this. It's all nice and level. And now I can just expand out to either side. And you'll notice I did not actually screw in at these two locations here. And that's because I want to see if when I lock them in on the next row, if it kind of tightens everything up, just so I don't have to put as many holes in the wall because I'll have to patch them eventually sometime later.
So a fair warning about this project, the hardest thing is gonna be the planning. And you will hear the 3D printer going right now because I messed up in calculating the parts. So I had these corner pieces, but when I put them up on the wall, then the top of this would not be attached because I made the other piece too long. I just didn't calculate it outright. So before you do anything, make sure you have all your intersections all laid out. I was just kind of winging it because I just kept printing grids and not really thinking about what I was gonna do around the outside. So I got the replacement pieces printed out and I had the same issue down here in this corner. So I'll show you how I fixed it and what I'm attaching it with. So when I had one solid piece, I was missing the connector right here. So I turned that into a bottom piece and a side piece. This one's already locked in. And then this guy can go right here. I'll be using a little triangle connector. And I've already got the anchor in there. Now I can finish up these last few pieces in this corner and they'll be ready to put some attachments on here and get this thing organized. This looks absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, some people do use different colored inserts, but I don't like the whole black look. And uh, yeah, everything is so nicely symmetric. It just warms my heart. Now I'm gonna cover it all up with uh, red holder. So I've laid out some of the things I wanna put up on the wall. Of course, we have the 3D printing tools. In the middle here, I've got some camera gear. And on the end here, just some electronics and repair items. Now, like I mentioned, there are a ton of things you can just download. And as you would imagine, a lot of those are for 3D printing. So I was able to print some things like this little nozzle holder. So you can keep little extra spares or different sizes in here. A little spot for tweezers, which are always handy for 3D printing. But my favorite thing that I downloaded was this guy. And it was probably the most complex too. And this is a custom holder for my little iFixit case. It's got all of my bits in here. This thing is just amazing. And when I printed this out, it looks like something out of Stranger Things. <laughs> Those are actually just tree supports because you can't print in thin air. And so they come up and support the print as it comes out. But they are so satisfying to pull off. And there are also a lot of general items that can serve multiple purposes, like this little hexagonal cup and the little shelves like I showed you earlier. Now, unfortunately, there are not models for everything. And I have this little deburring thing. I don't want it to fit in this cup because I just don't have a model that I could download. But what I do have is a very particular set of skills and calipers. Good luck. So I did put my design skills to work and I went into Fusion 360 and modeled up some of my own things like this little holder for my aperture lights. It is just a really basic shape with some rectangular cutouts. I also made a nice little spot for the remote controls for the LED shelf I just made. And I may have gone a little bit overboard and made a specific holder for my deburring tool with a slot for all 10 of the little extra parts that I have for it. So now I'm going to get all these hung up on the wall, but I will have links to everything that I used here, whether it was my design or designs that I downloaded. I'm going to try to upload all my designs to printables and you can find them all there. I'm absolutely loving this wall. I feel like it's missing one little thing, but I really think this is just gonna evolve over time and it is gonna be so cool to have all the adjustability. But, oh, I remember. Now it's perfect. If you wanna see how I made this floating shelf with LEDs, you can check the video out right there. A big thank you to the FTBT Builders Club. Until next time, guys, get out there and build something awesome.